But I think now we have something called consensus reality. Ask, a, ask anyone in, in the science, the mind sciences, what it means. Consensus reality means that we have laws and regulations over us. They're not laws. Where is the law that says I have to do this or that? Where is the law that says I have to do that? And Well, of course, the code says, I didn't ask you what the code was. I asked you where is the law. And then you find out that 95% of everything we call laws in America are not in point of fact laws at all. They are not there at all. Go back in the law book and find it. Find the law that says I have to do this. It's not there. So it's called consensus reality. We have come to accept things because everybody else accepts it. Well, I don't accept any of it. I don't accept the religious foundation, the political, none of the rest of it. And I think that you're going to be totally amazed tomorrow when you hear Vic explain one of the most revolutionary, radical things that you could do in this country. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but if you understand the concept tomorrow, Vic is going to explain it. It's going to be the most outstanding thing you're ever going to hear about how you can be totally free overnight by just filling out a couple of forms and repatriating you repatriate out of a country you what's the what's the word um, when you come out of a country and expatriate you can you can expatriate out of the United States corporate system and repatriate back into the country as an American citizen and if you do that it's just paperwork. It's not commercial. It's, it's political. You expatriate out of the United States and repudiate the United States citizenship. You, re, you come out of the corporate system and then repatriate into the American system and you get the paperwork right from Washington, D.C. saying you are now an American citizen. You are no longer considered by law a United States citizen. And as such, you are considered by law absolute total sovereigns. This is why in the Wild West days, what? Don't need one if you're an American. Say it away. Hold on. There's a whole, there's a whole, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to let him do it. Look at, do you remember in the Wild West days, the, uh, the John Wayne movies, the old cowboy movies? when the guys are right in the town and they're carrying their guns on their hips and they go into the bar and they have a few drinks and then they have a few words with another guy at the other end of the bar and they say, hey, if you can't, if you can't handle it, let's go outside. So the two guys go outside and they, and, they, and, they, and they stand against each other in the street with the women and children and everybody standing there and they draw on each other. And whoever happens to be faster uh, kills the other guy, Right? And did they, were they put in jail? No. Why? And when the, in and those, and those old cowboy movies, when the sheriff would come out to the guy's ranch, remember in the movies, the old guy would come out on the porch with the shotgun, and he'd cock the shotgun. He said, that's far enough, sheriff. Don't come any further. What do you want here on my property? And the sheriff would always say, no, no, we're just coming out here to talk to you. Remember? How come? How come you could walk out with a shotgun and cock it and say, hey, you stop there. Don't you come on my property. All right? And you can walk into a bar with your gun on your hip. And if a guy gives you any mouth, you go out in the street and take care of it right then and there. Why? It's because you were a sovereign. You were a United, not a United States citizen, but you were an American citizen. And as an American citizen... The law says you are an absolute sovereign. That's why as if you were the king of England, you, as the king of England has the right to have his own arms. He can, he can call up an army anytime he wishes. He can have arms because he's a king. But so can the king of France and the king of Germany. And if the king of Germany gets up one day and just decides he doesn't like the looks of this king of France anymore, he can declare war on him. Now, it might not be that easy. It might go the other way, and the king of France, uh, you know, will destroy Germany. But the two kings have the right to declare war on each other to the death. 
That's what, that's what you can do if you're a king. And that's the way it was when this country was founded. Every individual was considered on the international maritime law to be a sovereign. You can carry a gun, you protect your home with a shotgun or a, or a rifle, and you were a free man. It was only until 1868 that they done slipped this corporation in on us and got our birth certificates because you came down your birth canal and consequently you are a maritime admiralty product because you came out of your mother's water. You need to wake up and find out it's very, very simple. They just didn't tell you. It's like anything else. It's up here. Knowledge is power. All you've got to do is just fill out the paperwork and say that you are getting out of the federal corporation and want to be an American citizen. It takes about two weeks. The paperwork comes back to you. You are now an American citizen. And from that point on, it will tell you all the things that you are now allowed to do. You can carry a gun any place you wish. You can go anywhere you please. You pay no this. You don't pay that. You cannot be brought to court. You cannot be subpoenaed to a court. No courts in this country apply to you because there are no courts for American citizens. They're all courts are for United States citizens. Consequently, this is a whole new concept, and actually it's based on the way the country was founded. This is why I want you to be here tomorrow to listen to Vic, because he's far more interesting on this subject than I am. He's a brilliant man on this subject, and then you can ask those questions. But how would you like to be? How would you like to be able? Because I know when I was a kid, I used to ask my parents, why is it I, as a child, have to listen to what everybody tells me? I mean, as even a little kid, I would ask that. As a matter of fact, when I was confirmed in the Catholic Church, I was confirmed about eight or nine years old, ten years old, and uh, we were told that after the confirmation, the bishop might ask the children if they wanted to ask the bishop a question. And if you ask the question, the nun said, we'll break your face, okay? <laughs> so uh, just sit quiet, okay? So when the confirmation ceremony was over, and of course my, fam my family having Vatican officials in the family and all that, it was a very big thing. I was being, I was being confirmed it was a big to-do that night at the church. A lot of people were there. And after the confirmation ceremony was over, uh, the bishop said, uh, "Now that uh, you know, now that your children are Catholic, do you have any questions for your for your bishop?" And I stood up and said, "Yeah, I have a question. I got one." And I said, um, "Can I? My father works with torches, like a welder. Can I take a torch and turn it up and burn an angel? If an angel was here, could I burn him? Would it hurt him?" And he said, "Why? Why?" I said, "I want to know. Can I take a torch and burn an angel? Would it hurt him?" He says, "No." Why not? He said, well, an angel is a spirit. You can't burn a spirit because you've got to have wood or paper or something to burn. Fire is a natural phenomenon. You can't burn a spirit. And I said, well, then why am I worried about going to hell when my spirit will burn for hell forever if you can't burn a spirit? The mere fact that, that I got the kind of reception afterwards I, I got, my mother said, don't you ever do that again. And my dad, yeah. My dad said, great. <laughs> so I grew up understanding that there is two systems in the world today. There are two kinds of people in the world today, basically. The kind that get it, and the kind that don't get it. If you got it, you understand that the whole world... Look at Do you remember the movie Godfather? What about Godfather 3? Does that tell you something? In the movie Godfather 3, at the end of the movie, Michael Corleone, as the old man, sits out on the veranda with his, with his sister, if you'll recall, toward the end of the movie. Major stuff, he says. He said, you know, sister, when I was growing up, I used to think the higher up you go in society, the more correct and lawful and legal everything had to be. And now I look back on life and I know it's just the opposite. Hey, the higher you go, the bigger the criminals are. 
I understood this as a young kid. My father used to tell me, you can sit and listen, you sit over in the corner and you shut up. If I want something out of you, I'm going to knock it out of you, okay? So sit there and shut them out and just listen. Because I want you to learn that there are two kinds of worlds that we live in. The world that we all relate to every day and the real world of where the power is. And the real world is an occult world. The word occult simply means hidden. And the real truth about who's running this planet, who owns us, how they're manipulating, financing governments, religions, wars, all of this stuff, has been for too many years an occult subject on a need-to-know basis, and they figure you don't need to know. I'm telling you, if you're going to save yourself and this country, and I believe, and let me say this very clearly, I believe that America is the greatest country that's ever been created. I love the country, and I love the concept of freedom. I would much prefer standing on my feet and dying on my feet than crawling on my knees to somebody who thinks they own me. Because nobody owns me. And consequently, you need to stand up and start making your own decisions and don't buy the crap that's coming across in media and understand that there's some very powerful people in this world behind the scenes that are manipulating through stealth and guile through money, through manipulation, blackmail, they are manipulating our country. And I want to expose these people. They're traitors to my country, and I want to expose them. Catholic priests do not salute a flag in this country. Catholic priests owe no allegiance to this country whatsoever. Who are these people? Who are these people who have formulated religions and churches and call themselves royalty and have a divine right of kings? I don't buy it, not for a minute. I'm an American. And I love America because it's a free country and I want to keep it that way. And Thomas Jefferson said, anyone who expects to be free and ignorant expects something that's never been and never will be. If you're going to be free, you better wake up and stop doing your homework because the people that are running this country are nothing but lousy criminals. And all of it can be traced back to England, to the British royalty and to that international intrigue going on throughout the world. Ask the people of the, of the darker world, of the eastern world, about the British. Ask them about the English. As again I said, and I want to make it clear, I love England. I love the English people. I don't have a dime for British royalty or any of the traitors in this country who have thrown in with our masters. I am all for freedom, and I'd like to be able to help you to understand that this is now a time for people to wake up. Do not be waiting for the Messiah to come back. There is no Messiah coming back. Why? Because he was never here to start with. Do not look for the God of the Bible to save you. But where was the God of the Bible when Jews were being marched into concentration camps? That God is not going to help you. No God, is, no man-made God is going to help any of us. We've got to stand on our feet as Americans, start doing your homework, and start standing up for what is right. And I want to thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you.